excited to be with you today. Have you watched any good movies lately? Have you ever noticed that people who write the stories for books and movies usually tell us about a good guy and a bad guy? Well, hopefully the good guy wins by the time the movie is over. The villain is defeated and everyone celebrates except the villain. Do you think that happened in real life too? Well, not all the time. I know of a real life villain though, where it does work that way. His name is Satan. Have you ever heard of him? Some people also call him the devil, but people often draw pictures of him, of a man in a red suit and carrying a pitchfork, but that's not a true picture at all. He's actually real. And it's just not like the way you would see him in a movie or in a picture though. A long time ago, even before the world was created and Adam and Eve lived on earth, Satan was an angel with God. But he fell away from God. He wanted too much power for himself. He is very powerful, but he can never be as strong as God or Jesus. But you know what Satan spends his time doing? He doesn't want anyone to follow God. He doesn't want God to have control over our lives. And even after we ask Jesus to be the Lord of our lives, Satan will try to trick us into doing things that we shouldn't. Another thing Satan does is when we sin, he knows that Jesus will forgive us. All we have to do is ask but he will try to make us feel so bad that even after we're forgiven, we still think that we're just not good enough. We might feel like God wouldn't want us anymore because we sin, and that is a complete and total lie. I have proof. God has always loved us and will always love us. Nothing that we do could change that. This is not just a scary movie. This is real life. So why do you think I'm telling you about this today? Is it because I like scaring people? No? Did you know that there is no reason to be scared at all? Because I know the end of the story and God wins. We just have to know how to stay on God's team. And I have the answer for that too. It's found right here. We get ready for battle. This kind of battle is usually just inside our thoughts and minds, not like a war scene you might see in TV or in a movie. God gives us the protection we need to face any enemy. We just have to use it. Do you have the armor of God on right now? Do you know what that means? In Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, God gives us complete instructions on how to win the battle against Satan. This is very important passage from our Bibles. Listen carefully. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. That is a lot of words. Let me see if I can explain it. We are told to put on the armor of God so that we can stand up to our spiritual enemy, the devil. God wants to help us. He gives us everything we need. Did you know that you could be a strong warrior? All we have to do is pray, have faith, and act. One important uh, part of the armor is the belt of truth. And this is not a belt that's just used to hold up our pants. This is the foundational piece of armor. It might have, and um, Bible times might have been carrying weapons on it, but it also protected your insides right here from any kind of danger. Well, in the armor of God, it means that we are reading our Bibles and studying God's word. Knowing the truth of God's word is so important. And if we know what the Bible says and know it came from God, 
No one could trick us with lies. Another part is the helmet of salvation. Have you ever seen a, helmet, um, a baseball player at bat? They wear a special helmet to protect their heads from a very fast, hard ball that is gonna be thrown towards them by the pitcher. When we ride a bicycle, we're supposed to be wearing a helmet to protect our brains and heads. The helmet of salvation protect us from the enemy's lies. Knowing that Jesus is our savior and that he died for our sins is the most important thing. That means that we belong to him and we don't have anything to worry about because Satan can never change that. Next, we have the shield of faith. Now, this is not really a shield of faith. It's just a, a toy shield in a set. I don't have all the pieces, but just to show you. Shields are really cool, aren't they? My, uh, Mr. Joe, my husband, loves superhero movies. And sometimes the superheroes carry some special shield. Well, the shield of faith is very real. It's not a made up character for, um, or a tool for a movie. Do you know when you need the shield of faith? When you start to doubt God's promises. The enemy loves to use our weaknesses against us. Satan can make us feel like we are not important or that if we do something wrong, Jesus won't love us as much. That's ridiculous. Jesus died for each one of us. He proved that he loves us more than we can imagine. Satan wants us to feel like we have sinned too much for God to forgive. There's no way that that can happen though. The next one is using words you might not hear all the time, but it's the breastplate of righteousness. And this is another important piece of armor. It protects our hearts for God. When we have a strong desire to do what is right for Jesus, then we are wearing the breastplate of righteousness. The next part is a weapon, the sword of the spirit. You know what a sword is and how powerful it could be if it was real. This one probably wouldn't hurt anybody. It's again, just a toy one. But normally swords are very sharp and can cut. Well, it, it, here in Ephesians and chapter six, the sword is actually our Bibles, the word of God. We can use the words in this book to cut through what the enemy tries to tell us. And then the last part of the armor is, uh, full armor, are the, uh, the shoes of peace. The shoes of peace. So you wouldn't think about going out into a war barefoot. We would step on things in the ground that might hurt our feet, or maybe the ground would be too hot or too cold, and we wouldn't be able to walk as fast because we'd have to walk carefully to protect our, our feet and go slowly. Well, Jesus modeled peace when he lived here on earth. That's how he walked around earth. And we can live in peace if we remember that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, that he rose from the dead, and that he ascended into heaven. We need to use those shoes to follow Jesus in everything we do. Paul wrote about the armor of God in the letter to the Ephesians, and that's where I'm reading today. He reminds us that if we put on the full armor of God every day, um, then we'll be protected. We don't just do it once when we're saved. We need it every single day. And if we think about putting on each one of those pieces, just like we get dressed in the morning and put on our clothes, we can understand that putting on the armor of God is so much more important than what we're wearing on the outside. Each part of the armor is absolutely necessary. In a battle, if part of your physical body is uncovered, you could be hurt. If you have on the full armor of God, you are totally protected. So what did we learn today from um, Ephesians chapter six? Well, we need to trust in the, Jesus as the Lord and Savior, to believe in the words in this book, and knowing that they are true, we need to go to Jesus every day to ask him what he would need, uh, need us to do. When we study God's word and learn about the way he, uh, he helps people in the Bible, our faith grows. As we watch 
Jesus take care of people here on earth, our faith grows also. When we know the truth that Jesus is going to win, then we have nothing to worry about. Isn't that awesome news? So don't you want to be a part uh, of Jesus's army and to be on Jesus's side? Because remember, we know that's the one that wins. All you have to do is ask Jesus to become the Lord of your life. You admit that you're a sinner. You believe that Jesus died on the cross for your, for your sins and then he rose again. And then you confess that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Studying God's word and praying every day keeps us ready for the spiritual battle that we face. Will you work on putting on the full armor of God every day this week? It means that you really have to plan for that. It doesn't just happen by accident. I'm gonna really work on it too. God promises uh, so many things in our Bible, and all of them are true. And that means that he loves you more than you can imagine.